In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondocost. Welcome to Midnight Movie Matinee. Um, you one of your hosts, Steven. And I'm Danielle. I'm Mo, one of your hosts. It's okay, we're all hosts here. Even the people in the audience are hosts. You're the host. With the most. And we're going to start off today with a little film news segment to alleviate some of our worries from uh, our post-Oscars podcast. Um, of course, we were worried about the fate of... Uh, Barkad Opti. Of Barkad Opti. I was worried about his fate. You apparently forgot his name. I just didn't want to. I just didn't want to pronounce it incorrectly. Yeah. So I had to read it to pronounce it correctly. A story. Okay. Well, it turns out someone else was worried about his fate, and it was Judd Apatow, because he cast him in his new movie Trainwreck, which is an Amy Schumer written movie mm-hmm. about Amy Schumer dealing with stuff. That stars Bill Hader, Brie Larson, Colin Quinn, Barkat Abdi, Mike Berbiglia, John Glazer, Vanessa Bayer, Ezra Miller, Tilda Swinton, and the most important cast member probably, the WWE's own John Cena. Wow. So, uh... So basically... So what's this movie about? Uh, it's written by Amy Schumer. It's about some girl dealing with problems and Mike Birbiglia, her boyfriend, helping her out with them. A woman dealing with problems. That's all Universal saying. Yeah, that's all Universal saying. They're keeping it close. It's a comedy. It's called Trainwreck. It's going to be a train wreck, probably. Maybe. I hope. I hope. All I hope is that he's not playing some horrible stereotype character. I hope he's playing a person. That's what I hope. Judd Apatow's good about... Dealing with, min- he he always uses minorities in unexpected fashions, not necessarily in the most appropriate of ways, but he always comes at them from a different well, angle. It, the thing is, is that it's not necessarily about appropriate or inappropriate. It's just about making the person a character. Like I guess you're thinking about things like Forty Year Old Virgin, where he yeah, had... where you have the Indian guy being like, you will need the uh, fuck, what is it, Mooj. Yeah, his, name, yeah, yeah. his character's name was Mooj. Sorry. And yeah, but he was awesome. And he's actually a very famous. Um, you well, need the butthole pleasures. <laughs> he's not a very famous, but he is a comedian, and he's very very funny. So I'll look him up next time. I don't know his name off the top of my head. It's Stephen's fault. Blame Stephen for everything. Okay, moving on. This I mean, week. This week we're watching a movie straight from Netflix. Netflix is very <sighs> good at. Putting these undiscovered country movies, I think that Netflix has undiscovered combed, country movies. Yeah, like the like these movies are undiscovered country. Like, you, who's seen these movies? That's what I'm saying. Like, oh, this is new ground. I'm saying like I think that Netflix combed the bowels of the worst '80s hell and found some serious <laughs> stuff because I think since Netflix has come on, I've watched things like Miami Connection and uh, what was that other one, the the Vamp. Movie with uh, Grace Jones, starring Grace Jones. I think it was called Vamp. Yeah, it was called Vamp. That's why I said Vamp, the movie. And now we are, we have found another uh, gem. It's a mysterious gem because I have no idea what happened here to, they allowed James Hong to produce, not only, he produced this movie, he wrote this movie and he starred in it and he helped direct it. And it is called The Vineyard. It's basically James Hong taking care of James Hong 
and taking care of the audience by keeping you constantly on your toes. So I did some base research and you really can't find much on this movie except mm-hmm. that it was like a limited release straight to DVD almost well pre DVD 1989 limited release film straight to VHS straight to someone's house mm-hmm. where they tried to put it away in shame but Netflix found it um the thing about the vineyard let's start at the beginning okay the first 10 minutes of this movie <laughs> Leave you for the first 10 minutes just being like, what the fuck is going on? I don't know about you, but I sort of felt that way about the entire film. Yeah, they, they managed to keep it going. But the first 10 minutes especially, when you have James Hong go into a... Immediately give himself a sex scene. <laughs> and then violently wake up from that sex scene in a nightmare. And then... Start transmutating into an old man version of himself, like a werewolf. And then goes on to his dungeon full of half-naked women. I kind of wonder, I was sort of sitting here going, how much of the naked women did James Hong have an influence on? We need more naked women in this scene, please. You are not showing enough nipple. Nipples, more lingerie. I would like a hot wife to grope. It just kind of seemed, I don't know, I know maybe it's just because the, the bad guys that James Hong plays, they're always a little bit like creepy and pervy, you know what I mean? And so... Well, I, right now we're talking about James Hong, and people are like, James who? James yeah, Hong? I think that's James what it Hong is. played the immortal David Lopan in Big Trouble in Little China. He is a character actor that you've seen in... He's in everything. He was one of those "Hey, it's that guy" sort of things. He was the father in Wayne's World Two. He was uh, recently in Ripped as one of the as the Asian uh, other other like the Asian uh, vision that people see when they look at the Ripped agent. More recently, you may know him from Kung Fu Panda. He was Mm -hmm. Mr. Ping, which is um, the trainer. The no, the training grasshopper. It's Jack Black's oh, panda dad. character. Is Jack Black's dad Poe? It's Poe's dad, Mister Ping, the Noodle Man, the I'm Noodle, sorry. the Noodle Goose. <laughs> <laughs> I like to call him the Noodle Goose because he makes noodles. And his noodle gets goosed in the <laughs> vineyard. <laughs> and he's you're... done a lot of voice acting in recent years. Um, he's kind of scaled back on doing um movies, but he was basically like. He was the 80s, one of the 80s Asian guys. And it's kind of tough to to say, but it's the truth. When they needed to stereotype an Asian guy, they sort of threw, you know, James Hong and and all the other, you know, like the guy who played Short Round and stuff like that, kind of threw all those guys under the bus and made them the stereotype Asians. But they did a lot of, they had worked a lot and they did a lot of like comedy and horror. And I think maybe he just wanted to, give horror a chance i guess with this but it just i don't know this, this movie he, was, but uh, you can see that that he in this movie he can't get away from a sort of comedic sensibility cuz this whole movie has a sort of tongue in cheek it, it really reminded me of big trouble in little china not only is the plight mm-hmm. of the main character to be an immortal and to be lust after women and steal their life energy but his performance in in the it's first so 10 minutes the he prays to his wind god and it is but glorious the, i think the wind god's not even chinese it's like it's it's like a celtic wind god it's something strange it wasn't even a chinese god it did just the whole movie was all over the place like the god isn't chinese and he has like jade and you sort of wonder like I kind of was watching it. I'm like, Mr. Hong, why are you, like, taking... This is just such a... Stereotypes everywhere. But maybe he just thought, hell, they've already stereotyped me in enough stuff. I'm going to just run with it, I guess. Maybe own it for Mm. himself. But it was just... And then he played with the stereotype we all are familiar with, which is Asian people are excellent (laughs) winemakers. Yeah, that was the best part. I wonder if that was, like, his... 
maybe he got that in there. Like, I want mm-hmm. this movie to be about a man who makes wine. Chinese guy who makes wine. And beware. Beware the Chinese guy who makes wine. But it's so weird because this movie's called The Vineyard. It takes place on a vineyard. Yes. Any other cheap low-rent horror movie would have been like, the wine turns people into killers. Yeah. Or... Zombies. Though when you get drunk, you turn into a zombie or something. But this movie, big twist is, the wine's really good. (laughs) The wine is super, super good. The wine turns people into sex maniacs. Like... There's a scene in the film where he's, they're just having a party. And every time people drink this wine, they start dancing. There's no way to describe this sort of weird, jerky, swivelly hip motion they're doing. I call it the vineyard dance. You have to watch the movie just for that scene. I think it's about maybe 20 to 30 minutes in um, when the main character, oh, by the way, the main female character is named Jezebel. I I just want to know what that was about. Anyway, so the plot, to sort of sum the plot up, because there's really not a lot of plot. He, James this movie's Hon- rich with plot. I don't know what you're talking Miss, about. James Hong plays a character named Mr. Poe, who is a refined and renowned winemaker. He's, he, he comes off as like almost... The way people talk about, like, a James Bond villain. Yes. In that he's, he's a master of everything. He lives on an island with his hot wife, who's, like, 50 years younger than him. I don't even know. And, you know, he lives on his island with his hot wife. And he shows up on magazines with his hot wife. And he makes this awesome wine that people will bid, like, $50,000 for a bottle of this, apparently, like, Viagra wine. Because it was just, like... Give me this wine. I must have it. Vitality in a bottle. And so anyway, but his dark secret is he's actually like hundreds of fucking years old. And in order to sustain himself, he must eat pieces of this jade amulet and also the blood of young and nubile young Young men and women. Young people. Who are healthy. Who are healthy. Who have to get tested by an extremely homosexual German. Um, Because it's a a bad stereotype. He's extremely, extremely bad homosexual stereotype of a German homosexual. I don't know if that's a stereotype, but maybe it is. And he tests them, apparently. I don't know how dumb... Wait, wait, you're you're, you're falling off the James... No, I'm not. The Poe bandwagon. I'm not falling off the Poe bandwagon. I'm telling you, the German guy tests these people for Poe. Then he takes them to Poe's island... Poe boodles them with his no, magic what, and then he eats them. These and people kills we're them. talking about are Jezebel and her friends. Yes. Who are like the whitest <laughs> white people you can imagine, except for one guy, Jeremy, who is. Who was ambiguously Asian. And wears giant, uh, giant glasses. Jeremy, who was ambiguously Asian, and ladies, he was mm. very attractive. I wish that he was a better actor because mm. he was terrible. You, I'm pretty sure that he's a model because he could not. I know I don't want to stereotype models. I'm sure many of them are very intelligent, but he was like Zoolander, trying to act. He was just very pretty, but every time he opened his mouth, it was like he just learned his lines five minutes ago. And well, he, he was wanted to, to accept the actor slash model award. Yeah, he was. It looked like he was like reading them off cue cards. Sometimes, like it gave him a second pause to say lines like, "Mr. Poe, I have some questions." to ask you. That's why they gave him glasses. They yeah. were like, here's your character. <laughs> so, Wear it on your face. But You're so, smart. So for some strange reason, this was this is the whole thing. that This is why the plot makes no sense. We're going back and forth because the plot is crazy. So yeah, Mr. Poe, old ancient Chinese guy eating people, drinking blood, eating jade. And then the main the main characters, because I actually would prefer to call James Hong the main character because he really was the greatest Yeah, he's part. the main character. But, like, the, the, the victims, let's call them the victims mm-hmm. of his stuff, are a bunch of healthy, young, terrible actors, all extremely white, like we said, except for Jeremy, who is ambiguously Asian. And they come on a boat to this island... They get a secret invite. They think it's so secret, but little do they know it's all been planned. They and think then it's they a party. hot audition. Yeah, they think it's a hot audition for some movie. First of all, if anybody took me to some secret island to film a movie, I would be assuming that was porn. <laughs> right away. I don't know 
any actor who would be like, oh yeah, a sec- an audition on a private island with a creepy old guy who makes weird wine? Yeah, that's not at all going to be sexual in nature. Come on, please. These were like the... It's not just that they, they found the, the they healthiest. They all came ready to they put out. They found the dumbest actors they could find. Like the German guy, like the list was dumb as a post, clean, no STDs dumber than paint like i just feel like they were all so stupid and they were terrible actors the actual actors were terrible but that's okay so anyway they get on the island and the main female character is jezebel and everybody loves jezebel because she's pretty and blonde and she looks like that 80s like commercial of a girl running in white sneakers i don't know if they had one of those but that's what i'm imagining and so she gets on the island and mr poe singles her out for his mating ritual, sacrifice ritual, to be his bride. Now, the best part of the movie is the initial seduction of Miss Jezebel. Let's paint the picture for you. We are at an 80s party. There is terrible 80s music playing. Everyone's dressed very oddly. Some people are formal. Some people are extremely casual. Some people are extremely casual, like wearing like workout outfits and like like, board shorts, weird fake mustaches. Does it wasn't her boyfriend Jezebel? Jezebel has like a really white boyfriend. He doesn't have a mustache, but for some reason in the scene, he has this weird, creepy, like greasy mustache put on his face. I don't understand what's happening. There's one guy who's (laughs) in drag the entire time, (laughs) but refuses to acknowledge it. He refuses to acknowledge he's in drag. He's supposed to be the dumb jockey. Character. He literally, the best part of this movie, <coughs> one of the best parts anyway, was watching a bad actor trying to play a dumb person. Like having, they're already a bad actor, so having to pretend to be dumb and be bad at just, at, it was so funny. That guy was like so clueless. He's wearing like a full length blue gown and a blonde wig, and he just looks like he's chilling. That was his party clothes. He's wearing he, a costume. He had the best line of the whole movie. <laughs> Which is wait, wait, wait. so yeah. Let's let's go in order. That's so okay. Wait, wait, wait. So let's 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 just do the whole party scene in order because the party scene is the best part of the whole movie, I think. So anyway, so the party scene, weird clothing makes no sense. All of a sudden, oh by the way, this is the best part. There were like. Four people who originally saw on the boat to the island. All of a sudden, there are like three more people that just <laughs> randomly appeared. Like, <laughs> we were like, what's happening? Where do these people come from? And they're all young, new about people too. I'm like, did he have a second boat? Does he have a second um, stereotypical homosexual German? Like, what happened? Anyway, so they're on the, they're partying. And then Mr. Hong, we assume it's Mr. Hong because he's wearing a mask and a thing. Starts Mr. to Mr. Poe. Mr. Poe. I'm sorry. Yeah, there you go. Mr. Hong as Mr. Poe begins to seduce Jezebel. He's wearing like a golden, golden monkey mask. face mask and, and a, a shawl. A traditional Chinese like outfit, something made up. I don't know. But the, the, just when you feel that you're going insane at this part of the film, I want to assure you that you're not. And this is a very real thing. He begins to seduce her. By dancing in a very weird and jerky fashion. And yes, he is making the following sound. It is. <laughs> it's like this. It's a nonstop for like three minutes. It's nonstop of him doing this weird jerky 80s dance. And I'm sort of thinking. And it underscores the whole scene. Was this improvisational? Was he like, you know what Mr. Poe would do? He would chant like a weird goose. <laughs> like, and then wah. it somehow works. Oh, it totally works. She's hypnotized. Mm. And then she's dancing sexy. This is what I'm talking about, this weird 80s jerky dance. And then, so okay, so party This cut. is a secret that he learned over <laughs> hundreds of years of existence. The art, the of, art seduction. of seduction. Wearing a mask at a woman and moving your hands and going... Like, I can't make this up. This is a very real moment in the movie. And at this point, we lost our shit because we didn't know what was going on. And, oh, and also, just just as as randomly as they appeared and disappeared, zombies exist for some reason in this movie. Yeah, zombies just show up. Zombies just show up. And they never resolve the zombies. I don't know who the zombies belong to. They seem to imply they they belong to... They're haunting... They they imply that they're haunting Poe. Yeah. 
for his crimes against humanity blood and, stuff and like sacrificing that. people but never never really you don't care and it doesn't ever go anywhere and they're so. not they're not scary particularly it's just like cut to this is a zombie movie now cut to now it's back being a weird mystical witch man movie anyway so then okay now the best line of the whole movie um, the party scene as well. I told you, party scene is gold. At you, the party. Just, just, if you want to watch this movie, just sum it up, just watch the party scene. So, at the party, they're serving weird hors d'oeuvres. They kind of look like Little rabbit Little chocolate rolls or something. It looked like rabbit poop to me. Anyway, owl pellets. But anyway, so they go, eat them, and they eat them. And everyone's sitting around. Um, it's the random girl who appeared who wasn't on the boat. Um... It, it's the ho- the stereotypical homosexual German and the dumb jock guy dressed in a floor-length blue gown <laughs> and blonde wig, feeling totally comfortable with himself. I think this was his regular party outfit. Anyway, they all take a bite of these delicious treats, quote-unquote, and he then utters the best line of the whole movie. Ugh. <laughs> these are so bitter. They taste like spiders. <laughs> And, and then this part. And then we have to wait two scenes. <laughs> two whole scenes for the payoff to that line. That's right! The payoff of the Oh my god. You know what? We didn't even I didn't even connect the dots until this moment. Okay, but first of all, let's dissect this moment. He is an Anglo American male. He's <laughs> been raised in the United States his whole life. I know there are some people in other societies and cultures who eat spiders. But no one in America's eating fucking spiders. So, where the hell did he get this comparison moment in his life? I just figured when he was a kid, (laughs) he was so dumb, he picked a spider off the floor, a daddy long legs, (laughs) and tried it out, and was like, oh, these are so bitter. It's one thing if he came from a culture that possibly ate spiders, but coming out of the mouth of this extremely American dumb jock, it was most random. And then you, yeah, and then, like I said, then you realize two scenes later that they were just using that line for some strange exposition when another girl who gets cursed by Mr. Poe begins to puke spiders. But you're like, why? <laughs> it's not even the same girl who ate the food. It's another random girl. No, I think Jezebel puked was- spiders too. No, Jezebel never puked any spiders. The Claudia girl. There was this really pretty girl named Claudia. She started puking spiders. Did she eat the spider food? Yes, she ate the spider food. So did that? Why didn't they all start puking spiders? Because only hot chicks can't handle the bitter taste of spiders. Those girls <laughs> uh-huh. can't handle their spider you rolls. Can't handle their spider mm. rolls. She's dumb, got a weak stomach. You're dumb, bitch. You'll never mm. get out because <laughs> you can't handle the spiders. Um. To connect all this to the wine, by the way. That's the best part. At this moment, you're like, what the fuck does this have to do with the wine? And the vineyard. The vineyard. Okay, so apparently he's putting the dead... He's he's using some of the uh, models slash actors to feed himself, to keep himself young. But then some of them he's putting in his vat of wine. To, like, infuse it with... To infuse with, it with youth. With youth and energy, because that's and how that works. apparently vagina juices and semen, because I didn't... I, like, I just didn't... He revs them all up so hard, like, he gets them all horny, and then he's like, Death! Oh, oh you think that's part of the trick, Yeah, too? I think that's part of you the trick. You have to get them all full of, like, fluids. You have to get them full of, like, fluids and, 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 and vitality, horny. like, oh! Mr. Hong is going to take you, Mr. Poe. Mr. Poe. Mr. Poe. I keep See, you can't even. It's that's how good he is in this movie. You, you blur can't the just lines between Hong, Hong and Poe. And po. Hong and Poe are one. Mr. Poe. Oh, well, anyway, this movie makes no sense, and these the, scenes all seem to happen in this sort of weird scrapbooky sort of way. Like, scene one, random. The one thing we haven't mentioned is that Poe has a a. A whole stable of henchmen yeah. that he uses throughout the film, and they're in like workmen's outfits. <laughs> and there's one for every uh, race. There's a black one. There's an Asian one. There's a fat white one. <laughs> they're just like all covered, and they're just constantly doing his bidding <laughs> silently and never speaking and never questioning. <laughs> never questioning why they're kidnapping this, women and tying them up. He's a Bond villain. He's absolutely one hundred and ten percent a Bond villain. There's this. They they wanted to make a James Bond movie and they ended up making this movie instead. 
And I mean, the it's just so much crazy shit happens. I can't. There's a mom who's trapped in the attic, and there's zombies, and there's wine, and there's half naked people tied up, and there's just it's a jam packed, fun time, full movie. It is definitely a midnight movie matinee worthy film. I say yeah. watch it when you're very drunk or something other than that. Watch it with friends. Watch it with friends. Laugh. Prepare enjoy to make fun it. of it. Uh, enjoy it, but respect it. Forgive the 80s for being so horribly racist. There's really nothing you can do about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to do about it. Just let it go. Let it go. On that let note, this has been Midnight Movie Matinee. I'm Steven. And I'm Danielle. And you just got matinee in your face. Can't hold it back anymore. Wundercast? Give yeah. it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name. Yeah.